Alan, the food dude, is in the house. Hello, Alan. Morning. How is everybody? Uh, I think we're hungry, ready to go. Man. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we, good. Let's let's figure it out. Is it warm or is it cold? Warm. It is warm, nice and warm. it smells good. It's like a uh, mm. it's some sort of a soup, I think, Alan. Well, it's we'll better see. than a soup, baby. Oh, yeah. You, right. we, we got serious. Oh, wow. Whoa! We got serious. Right. It is chicken gumbo. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Whose birthday is it? Because we don't deserve this. Oh, you're right. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> there any, let's see here. Oh, yeah. I will freely, <laughs> wow. freely tell you. Uh, it's kind of in honor of crawfish season, even though I haven't bought my crawfish yet. But I had these, you know, wonderful chicken thighs, and my celery looked Man. good, and the parsley looked good. And I was like, you know, I just need to make some chicken gumbo. Yeah. I just need to put this together. So, and, and Ditch, in your honor, the okra and the onion got through the through the food processor first, so you don't have to hit anything squishy. That's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good. Don't you got a little meat. sausage in there, Alan. Uh, well, you know, you had to throw in a little extra kibasa, give you a it's little good. something to play with there, give you a little extra texture, besides just a little chicken. So, uh, welcome to gumbo. The secret to gumbo is a good roux. roux. You know, a little uh, fried, just fried flour, basically. And as you can tell, this is nice dark roux. The other secret ingredient is a weird little spice you've seen on the shelf for years. You had no idea what it was. And it's called gumbo filet. Yeah. It's, it's spelled file, F-I-L-E. But all that really is is powdered sassafras leaves. Really? Man, this is good. And that is what gives gumbo that that just uniquely gumbo flavor. Huh. That makes it, you know, takes it from that, yeah, it's a good soup, to, oh, my goodness, I'm going to fight somebody over this. All right, I'm going to say that the thing that I normally say in a segment where everybody else looks at me weird, but when I take a bite of this and taste it at first, it's like I'm walking up to the edge of of tasting saltiness, but I don't. Almost, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, that actually is a very carefully designed effect. You don't, we, you don't want to overwhelm your food. Then that's a big problem. Ditch is sensitive to... Uh, capsaicin. Yes. You, you're you not a big hot fan. That's correct. But you love flavor. And you can get a ton I don't of like flavor. like squishy flavor. You don't like squishy flavor. Uh, but you can get a ton of flavor without making it hot. I was about to say, I'd like a little, Alan, a little maybe if I, if you, next time bring us some some pepper. I'll just yeah, heat bring, it up. Ta- it was good. But I mean, yeah, table I like pepper. Just, food. you know, but Just yeah. bring you some black pepper. Something, just bring yeah. you a little something to add to it. Yeah, but I mean, it's good. I'm, I'm well, just you know, saying, I always bring I you guys the base. Mm-hmm. I, I never bring you actually that, you know. Bring could, some condiments and some wine <laughs> next time. <I> don't know. <laughs> oh, the wine is some easy. Basco. <laughs> you know, and ex- well, exactly, because some folks want to bring it up a little bit, yeah. put a little macaroni's in there. Yeah, Other good, folks though. want a little jalapeno. Other, you know, there's probably a thousand variations. Well, this is good of gumbo. because you could serve this to everybody, and everybody could add a little bit of what they all, all want. Exactly. Yeah. I, I always kind of look at dinner as the condiment buffet. All right, here's your base. What you want to do with it from here is up yeah, to you. It's a lot easier yeah. to add than start taking stuff away. Well, and you always got people that want to cook, you know, exactly what grandma made. Well, what grandma made 50 years ago is back when everybody smoked. Grandma's dead. And, so. yeah. Well, you know, actually, I find a lot of old recipes kind of counted on everybody smoked. So well, they put a yeah, lot of yeah. extra stuff in so they could get it through to your taste buds. Well, it's, you know, 70 years later and nobody smokes anymore. Yeah, thank right. goodness. And, you know, we got taste buds again. You don't have to hammer somebody to get flavor in there. What kind of shrimp would, would you would you do? Like a baby shrimp or a blackened shrimp? No shrimp? Oh, my gosh. You pick pick your poison of I am, I'm, all right, I got hugely addicted to, of all things, alligator gumbo. Yeah. Which is serious because you get big chunks of gator. Does it taste like chicken? Uh, No, it tastes uh, tastes somewhere between kind of shrimp and frog legs. Yeah, frog legs are good too. Yeah. Oh, you can do do it. Oh, frog leg gumbo is amazing. It's like eating Uh, wings. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Ditch is looking at me and I Jeff like, what? what? I tell you what I don't like. Alan's going to bring in a rattlesnake next week. No, I don't want that. No thanks. Oh, rattlesnake is delicious. You can kill the snakes. I just don't want to see them or eat them. Rattlesnake is delicious, Kill them all. Uh <laughs> One thing that annoys me is uh, when you go to uh, you know a la di da restaurant or somewhere, <laughs> it's when they leave the tail on the shrimp. Just take take it off. Yes, I'm paying a lot of money for it. Can you take yeah, it okay, off? You can just when, do this little piece and get it off of there. Put it in something like this. Yeah, yeah. No. it's not even the shrimp cocktail or anything. It's already like been submerged in something. You've taken the shell off and everything. Else. I don't need to see the tail for presentation. Just rip it off. Yeah, you, you've already chopped the sausage up. What? Just use the same knife for the shrimp. Yeah, yeah. just get the little get the little hard nibbly bits out and go ahead yeah. and say what you can eat. Well, and, and you know, to Tim's point, there is a little hint of salt in this. It does. There is. There's a little salty to it. Yeah, it's it good is, though. It's I like a it. Little, little, just right up to the edge. Put just enough. Yeah, you know, basically, it's kind of like that. It, when you're cooking it, you're like, you know, one more shake of salt and this will be perfect. And yeah. that's where you stop. Because now, your guest, if you want more salt or if you want more pepper, if you want cheese, if you want mashed potatoes, you know, whatever. You know, that's what you can begin piling on and kind of do it yourself. Nothing like somebody who, who has, uh, and I've done this before and then I realized, like if you get a salad and you're like, I like cheese on my salad. And you pile it on with cheese, you might as well just... Eat Put a bowl some lettuce of, on your cheese. You might have to just eat some grated cheese. I mean, because then it, that's all you taste. Yeah. Yeah. You can um, overwhelm your food pretty easily. So. How, what's the prep time on something like this? Uh, that's about an hour's worth of work. Oh, it's just boy. chopping Here vegetables. Oh, boy. And, and it just took it us three minutes to eat it. Well, in a couple hours of cooking time. But yeah. 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 35 seconds Bring me to some suck more, it down. I'll stretch it out to an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, the food dude, where do they find out even more about you? All right, they can pop over to the cookingtodayshow.com and follow along with our little kitchen shenanigans. And we'll post this up. You got a picture for us? I got you a picture. We're going to post it up, newstalk989.com. Alan, the food dude, next week, Tim's going to be on a cruise ship enjoying a Ooh. buffet.